It's the Danny Cutler Show on Independent Radio, KWSS 93.9 FM, and we're streaming at kwss.org. Another interview for the Indie Film Fest. If you're listening on 93.9 FM, you can't see him, but you can always go catch the Zoom after hearing this portion of the interview. I have Pedro Perez Nunez with me, who is the director of Toro de Oro. Did I say that correctly? Yeah. <laughs> I get a little tongue, you yeah. know, tongue twisted there. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, the film, it's, it's understandable. The, <laughs> the film is premiering on Saturday, the award ceremony night at the film festival out at the Irish Cultural Center. So welcome, Pedro. Thanks for chatting with me. Thank you for having me. Um, this is great. Um, I love the opportunity uh, uh, for me having me on the show to talk about my film and promote yeah. uh, promoting the film fest which is a great festival oh absolutely absolutely and we will talk about the film because I really really enjoyed it it was a wonderful Thank wonderful you. watch and the 30 minutes just flew by and I was like wait oh, that's, that's good. it there's no more <laughs> <laughs> When's part two? <laughs> I know. <laughs> but let's back up a little bit and tell us how you got started in filmmaking. When did that bug bite you? Oh my God. I, I didn't realize I had this bug in me, per se, uh, this virus in me <laughs> until, in, until I was in, in high school. Um, in high school, I ended up taking a class and uh, I went to car hating high school here in town okay um and uh I, there there was this class that in freshman year would take like a computer class and then it, it would evolve eventually to a video class and it would uh, senior year you would you know go out there and like use the camera you know this is 2002 um you go out there and uh, shoot footage of whatever project you know we're assigned to and then we're we get the opportunity to edit this project, you know, in, in our classroom. So that was our class to do, go out there, shoot projects, depending on what the teacher wanted as a project, and then went out there and edited it and showed it to the classroom. I love that. Um, so it was, it was one of those things that I, at first I thought I wanted to be an editor because I was editing. And then after that, after um, I finished high school and uh, I went and did my own thing. And then after that, I was like, you know what, it's, storytelling that I'm, I'm passionate about. Um, ever since I was a kid, my parents would always had movies playing, you know, and on the weekend. And like, I would like, I grew up watching all these 80s and 70s movies. <laughs> they were all dubbed because this was in Mexico, by the way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, having, um, living, you know, having to be, at the time I was in Mexico as a, as a child, I moved to the US, to the US until like I was 11 years old. So back oh. before that, I was like, my imagination was wild because I was a wild child. I was out in the street. I was out in the, in, you know, I grew up in Sonora, Mexico, which is the border state of, on the side of Mexico, of Arizona, which is desert. Okay. And, uh, I would just be in the desert all day, pretending to be whatever, you know, a character or whatever. So that's how I believe it just became and it evolved to like knowing that it was something that I could do for a living eventually, you know, nice. and storytelling, you know, combined to like with, you know, shooting and like editing. I was like, okay, this is it. This is what I, I want to oh. build. I want to make movies, you know? Yeah. Oh, I, I feel your passion. Even coming through the zoom, I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> And and this film shows shows your creative your creativity and and shows how much you love it as well. Um, let's talk about it, Torre de Oro. What is the film about? So the film is about a, a matador, um, a torero. So the title is called is the Golden Bull. Right. That's what it, it translates to, Toro de Oro, and that's the nickname of the main character, which is Valentin Gallardo. But they call him Toro de Oro because he comes from like a. a a family heritage of like bullfighters. Mm -hmm. His grandfather was a bullfighter. His dad was a bullfighter. He's a bullfighter. So he wants to continue his legacy. Uh, but uh, it gets to the point where he gets badly injured in one of his uh, fights. I think it was his last fight before the fight on the film. And he, he has PTSD from that. And he knows that he needs to go back and continue his legacy. But he's also married and his wife is very concerned about him that he she believes that he's not ready to go out there and fight mentally but he believe he thinks is it's a it's a conflict between 
do I continue my legacy and my love for bullfighting or do I just let it go and focus on my wife, you know, and my family and just be alive? <laughs> Cause yeah, bullfighting yeah. is a dangerous sport. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's basically the whole conflict of the film. He's stuck between continuing, you know, fighting and the love for fame and you know the glamour of the bullfighter, or just like retired and become, just be a family man and just yeah. leave it at, uh, at that. You know, so and that's the main conflict. Of the yeah, film. and he's getting pulled from many directions. Like his promoter is yes. is a very yeah. big conflict of interest <laughs> in the film as well. Yeah, so, and, yeah. Yeah. So I wanted I wanted to I wanted his promoter to be that side of, of the uh, the bullfighting you know which flame, uh, fame and glamour and like mm -hmm. just like you know um, the riches you know yeah. of bullfighting and like uh, here this is the spotlight and he just brings it all the time and then on the <laughs> other side the wife is trying to pull him to yeah. be like no look just think about what has happened. You don't need to continue this legacy. This legacy, you know, you, you, unfortunately, you know, um, his past, um, his dad passed away of bullfighting, you know? So it's it's just a constant reminder, like, dude, like you could die. I don't yeah. want you to die. Yeah. But also, That's... you know, it's your passion. So it's 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 that internal conflict of like a, any human being. It could just be with the, you know, boxer. It could be with, you know, a car, you know, a car, um, race car driver. Um, right. You name yeah. it, but it just it just happened to be a bullfighter. Yeah. So yeah. where did where did the idea for using a bullfighter come from? So <laughs> I was um in the beginning, um, it wasn't my idea for per se completely. It was actually the actors and my producers, Parker Richardson's huh. uh, idea. Okay. Uh, uh, the main actor's name is Rogelio Camarillo. He's also the co-writer on it. They um we worked I worked with Rogelio on another project um before Toro de Oro, like a year or two years before that. And um and I really love his acting. He's like like very genuine like actor, like he, he loves is, yeah. craft and he shows it on the screen. So I wanted to like work with him again because I fell in love with his, you know, performances and and, and like the the amount of like um work that he puts into his character so i was like i need to work with this guy again and um parker richardson and him had uh, a meeting and they're like what can we do because at the time rogelio was living in tucson and he was ma making the move to move to la and pursue his career you know as i can as, as he should yeah um at the time i think this is 2018 i think yeah it's like 2000 at the end of 17 or beginning of 18 i can't remember and uh, Rogelio said, like, I've always wanted to be a bullfighter. Like, I've always wanted to, like, play a bullfighter. I feel like it's just, like, such an elegant sport. And, you know, it's bloody. It's, it's controversial. I get it. But <laughs> the, whole, <laughs> the whole suit and the whole, you know, thing about wearing the suit, he just always wanted to be that. So him and Parco came out with the idea of, like, having, a, like, a conflict story about a bullfighter. And they uh, they had a conversation with me about it, and I was like, okay, let's I'll come up with the script. And I started write, uh, writing the script. At the beginning, it was like eight pages, I think it was. Short script, we wanted um, a short film, just to have this guy be a bullfighter. But um, we came to the uh, the huge wall of like having to find this suit. <laughs> And I was like, "There's no, we have this script, and I'm like, there's no way we're making this film without this suit. The suit is a film. Oh, like, yes, it is. And, and you know, it just, there's no way we can make this. At the time, we had no idea what it was, you know, how it looked. We'd never seen one in front of us, you know. Yeah. So we thought we'd go out, you know, silly us. We thought we can go out there and make it, right? <laughs> so, anyway, so um, the story, you know, it just got put in the shelf for a while because we're like you know what i told the guys i was like guys there's no way we can make this film without a suit we need a suit right. so if we if you guys can find me a suit or we can find a suit let, let's make a film we left it 2020 came in and then um sorry 2019 i think it was like a year later he um rogelio came back to me he keep he's staying in communication with me he's like hey man like we need to make this film like need to, yeah i get it 
but I need this suit. Like, I can't make this movie without this suit. And then uh, he was like, can I take a jab at the script? Maybe we can make it longer and I can do things and that and that. I was like, yeah, go ahead, man. It was just this script on the shelf, you know? Like, it was collecting dust or whatever. Yeah. You know? And um, he brought it back. He brought it back with, uh, I think it was like 25 pages, 30 pages. Made it longer. <laughs> From eight. <laughs> Yeah, but it, like the story stayed the same, but uh-huh. he continued adding things and he's like, what do you think? I was like, okay, I like this. And then what I what did I do? Started killing his babies per se. Like that's what we say in, in like, this <laughs> filmmaking. You know, like I started like ripping apart the script and like, I was like, you know, it would work better like this for the story and this and that because he wanted me to direct it. And I wanted to direct it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, boy, I need to have my vision. In this. And then it ended up being a 25 page script. Um, and we're like, okay, let's do this. And then at the time, Park or Richardson is like, okay, we're gonna create a Kickstarter to you know get funding for this film. So we started casting the other actors. And um, okay, but I still need this suit, man. Like, <laughs> just, there's no way. It's not like a boxing film. No, where no. you just need some shorts. <laughs> and then goes, that's it. No, I was like, man, like this suit is it, it needs to be real. So, uh, you know, Rogelio had this person in, in Tucson that it's like, a, it was a, like a designer, fashion designer. He's like, he could make it. Okay. So, but to do that, we need to see a suit. We need to see, make sure we get it. We can't just go to a costume store and like buy, you know, bullfighter. Yeah, yeah. You want it to be authentic. Authentic. Mm-hmm. Anyways, long story short, we, um, Parco did a, uh, my producer did a uh, Google search and he's like, bullfighters in Arizona. <laughs> He found he found an interview of like um, for um, I think it was like a, a PBS show. I, th- I can't remember. It was like Rhodes, Arizona Rhodes, whatever. Uh, Silviano Tanori, which is you know the uh, the trainer on the film, he's an actual bullfighter. Oh. We found him. Bonnie Park will reach out and find him on Facebook and he answered and he's like yeah man I got this suit I live in Nogales Arizona like we can meet halfway or like, you know what we'll buy you lunch let's meet up in Tucson we all met in Tucson he brought his suit um and we saw it and I was like there's no way we're making this suit the stitching <laughs> is made of wire it's metal oh, stitching. Wow. It's, it, it's it's weird it's just like it's I guess it's like a couple people in Mexico City and in Spain or where, whatever, like they could make that suit, but it's just impossible to make it. Uh-huh. Like so, like somebody that has never done it, like he's not going to be able to make it. Right. And and I just fell in love with this suit. It was his old suit. He used to fought on it and like, we're like, he had the cape, the sword, the hat, the shoes, everything, socks, tie, you name it. Everything you see on the film is his. And we're like, oh, well, and then he's like, I think we can make it. our plan was to go see this suit so we can make it to you know to size it for Rogelio, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. There, then we know we're like, okay, how we're we gonna make this suit? There's no way. And, and then Silviano is like, you know what, man? Like, at at that time, I was his size, and maybe it fits him. Let's try it on. What happens? It fits. Wow. It fits like a glove. It was like, meant to be. It was meant to be. And I was like, well, we don't make, need to make a suit. This is the suit. We talked to him. He was so nice and so helpful. He's like, you know what? Use everything for me and, you know, I'll help you guys. And I was like, you know what? I want a trainer for my film. Like, you you want to act? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be in the movie? <laughs> what better What better person to, like, play a trainer than the actual trainer, right? True. Like an actual bull fighter, right? So he was so nice and he came out and, like, you know, long story. I mean, anyway, so like we and got you get suit. consulting on <laughs> set. That was it. That was it. We got consulting on set. You know, he worked with Rogelio back, like worked a lot with him, and like, yeah, he connected him with another bullfighter in in San Diego. So we, you know, he Rogelio lives in LA now. So, so he went out to you know San Diego to train with his other bullfighter, connected through Siliano, and like we we just managed to make it work, and then we launched our Kickstarter wonderful with the suit in hand actors you know the crew and we told everybody yeah. this is what we need is how much we need and we raised our funds and we went out there and did it uh you know covid came in and you know i got covid <laughs> the actor got covid so we oh kept my goodness it. yes we kept pushing until we did it and then that's how the film came about and like 
Sorry, that was a long. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. I love hearing the story. It's so it's, great. And there's and there's plenty more that is just <laughs> craziness. How everything just like came together to become this film. You know? And it worked out the way it was supposed to work out. And yes. And yes. when you watch it, I mean, yeah, it, it the suit is not fake. It doesn't look like a costume. It, mm -hmm. It's it's a beautiful suit. It's a suit. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's not just the cape too. Everything is like so it's it's original like this this got fought bulls with it like this <laughs> yeah uh, no i think that's great and then it just all worked out to put it's like just come be in the movie and I, yeah. oh it's beautiful i love hearing the background especially yeah. after seeing it so i'm yeah. very excited for everyone watching and listening to check out this film as well and and you'll see i mean it'll all click when, <laughs> when he's you're a watching. great actor too yeah yeah it was a lot of fun it was a yeah. lot of fun he was kind of right in the middle of everything you know yeah. it's 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 he was like both on the wife's side and the promoter side. He was just smack in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, well, <laughs> it's very <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So each character is pretty rich on this film. Each character has like a really uh, deep background into like what is going on in this film. Every character is super important in this film from, mm -hmm. you know, the reporters to like everybody in this yeah. film. Yeah. 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 What do you want people to take away after they've seen it? What do you want them to get from it after they've watched? that um that we can be that there's still there's the stories out there that could be made about a mexican other than immigration or cartels yeah it's That's a unique it. story it's a very yeah. unique story it's i mean a human story you know it's yeah. a human story and i just and that's a, this, those are the type of films i want to make i want to make human stories not humans about you know, next and it the other thing is in Spanish. I wanted to just mm -hmm. be completely genuine, you know, like I couldn't make it in English. It, it wouldn't work the same. No, For, it definitely it been, wouldn't. It would have been different, you know. It would have I just want people to understand that there's filmmakers out there like me that I would just want to make films, beautiful films like this, and that we can make we just want the opportunity to like we just want those opportunities to make films like Toro de Oro and and uh, and also I don't know if you noticed, but it was it was shot like it was made in the seventies. Yes, I did. I kept looking at his wife's hair, and I was yeah. like, and then and then in the the flashbacks with the jeans, really high yeah. and, and everything. So yeah, it definitely had an air of like this is not now. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Yeah. So I wanted to, I wanted to make a how would i put this i want to make i want i don't know if you know about spaghetti westerns they yeah oh yeah movies in the 60s uh, late 60s i wanted to make a mexican spaghetti western but not about a it wasn't a western it was more about right. a bull fighter yeah and then like uh when it came to cinematography it was just all 70s yeah know? Yeah. And, and it's really well done so kudos to you i mean it was, it's a beautiful film and it is going to air again. It will screen at the Indie Film Festival on Saturday uh, before the award ceremony at the Irish Cultural Center downtown. And you can also get the online screening pass and you can see the films actually every night. So you'll be able to see all the films each night if you don't feel like going out or whatever, you can just stay at home with your little screening pass and, and watch in your pajamas with some popcorn. <laughs> Or go watch or watch the film online and go to the festival and talk to me on the festival because I'll exactly. be exactly. Are you going days. to be there? All three days, yeah. Oh, yeah. wonderful! Then we'll definitely yeah. meet in person. I'm excited to meet you, <laughs> so that'll be good. Pedro, tell me, what is the importance of having a film festival like Indie Film Fest? Why is it important to you as a filmmaker? It's uh, so people could know what I you know what I do as a filmmaker. Like it's it's yeah, I get it. Like you can throw it out there online and people would watch it and like but it's not the same i feel like when when you're when you're at a festival or a movie theater and you go watch a movie like you're experiencing something at the same time with a group of people like you just eventually like once the, the you know the, the 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 picture is done you could talk about it and and they have questions for the film like you do now you know and i could inform you all this like things that you didn't know about the film you know when you watched it you know like and it just make it makes it more more important of a film and it just becomes a better film a greater film in a sense um i i feel like it's the, the indie film fest 
um, would bring a lot of that into the picture. But where you know other collaborators could come in, to, come and talk to me about how did you do this? How I could help other filmmakers and be like, hey, this is how I did it. I use this. I I did that. Um, you know, um, this is the writing that I did, and you know, information about the film, information about myself, and I could just make new collaborators, and I could make other films with these people, or there might be a, a, a person that is interested in investing on this film or other films that I would want to make and be like, hey, you know what? I love what you're doing. I want to help you make more. Because uh, it's so hard for a, like an independent filmmaker to make films, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Toro de Oro, it's, it's, it's years of like, you know, collaborations with other filmmakers that I, you know, I met on my work field, you know? Like, I it just, it's, people, friends that I met through other years that would just want to make films. And then we all brought our 100%, 130% to this film yeah. from like the wardrobe to the cinematography, to the sound, to the music. It was like, everybody brought their, like I said, 130, 150% yeah. to make it what it is now, you know? Well, and, and it shows, I think too, because you're right. I mean, independent film does not get the same platform that yeah. more major films will get, even in film festivals. Yeah. So to be able to have that platform through an independent festival yeah. and show that you can have a lower budget film mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's still just as good or even better quality in some cases than a major budget yeah. film. Yeah. So. And and also because it's so it's local, uh, mm -hmm. um, you could you could show what you could do as a local. You don't yeah. have to be in LA to make what I did. You know, like right. you know, I want to show all the locals in town. Like, be like, okay, I want to be a filmmaker, but get that mentality out that I need to be in LA to make this type of work. You know, I need to be in in Atlanta or you know New York to make these films. Um, yeah, the opportunities are you know bigger, but you can also make good stuff here in Arizona. And, and that's why we have the Indie Film Fest because that helps give that opportunity even though you're not in LA yeah. or in New York or in any of yeah. the major markets. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like it could also help uh, these tax incentives that we don't have here in town about the you know, filmmakers here too. You yeah. know? It were, could, you know, what if somebody that has power to be like, okay, I could, you know, a politician could watch my film and be like, okay, I want more of that here in the states you know i can yep. generate more money i could generate more work uh, who knows like it just i feel like the indie film fest could be an opportunity like a door for that conversation or right. like you know the more people they show the more you know the positive whatever like they know that there's more interest in it and they just want to they could help yeah you know? Well spoken. Absolutely. Absolutely. How can people find out more about you and your work, Pedro? I have a website and also have an Instagram account that I hardly use, but I use it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's at Pedro Perez and the letter N at the end. Pedro Perez N. And uh, that's also my website, Pedro Perez N.com. Wonderful. Are you working on anything currently? I am, I am writing and I am like, I'm very busy with work right now, but uh, I'm trying to, you know, stay, stay creative. So I'm trying to write more and I try to get this, um, uh, this other creative projects flowing, you know, okay. uh, and also trying to get more directing work as, you know, the commercial and, you know, film world out there, you know, just to be a commercial director too. Just so one day at a time. Especially right time. now, still in yeah. this pandemic, it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just tough. One uh, step at a time. <laughs> one step, but I'm just, I'm, I'm that type of person that I always have time for everything. I try to have some time for everything. I have tried to have time for my family. I try to have time for, oh, yeah, like films and like writing and like, you know, you name it, you know, build my old junks, my cars. And I'm always like doing every something, you know, but, um, but yeah, I feel like, I'm excited to be, you know, there and so can people see what's in my head? You yeah. Know? <laughs> no, <laughs> like, it's great. Yeah, that was all in my head. And it's one of those beautiful things about filmmaking that you could just show people what you what's been in your head for so long. And okay, it's right there, you know. When it comes in, yeah. So well, it's it. a beautiful thing that came out of your head. <laughs> Thank you. It's a wonderful film. So I'm, I'm excited for everybody else to see it. Um, 
again, anyone who wants to grab their tickets, theindiefilmfest.com. And you can get, I know that Thursday is sold out. Um, Friday is right there on Roosevelt Row at the Welcome Center. And KWSS will be out there as well that evening. And then Saturday will be the screening and the award ceremony at the Irish Cultural Center. So indiefilmfest.com and you can get all that information. Pedro, thank you so much for being on the air with me today for a little while. See, you did just fine. <laughs> thank you for having me. I do talk a lot. So <laughs> I guess that's that's part of being a writer, you know. That's just, what I want. I'm as a radio host, I'm talking all the time. It's nice to let somebody else do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, but thank you for having me. I really appreciate your, you know, your questions. And I hope you guys can make it to the Indie Film Fest all three days. I'll try to be there all three days, but I'm definitely gonna be there at the 12 uh, on Saturday night. Wonderful. If you have any questions for me or if you'd like to know more about me and what I do with my films, uh, reach out. Excellent. Thank you so much, Pedro. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Danny.